it starts, I'm a favorite, uh, I'm a favorite professor. Students don't lie to favorite professors. I wouldn't jump to that conclusion. Okay. Global skepticism says that there is no any true knowledge. Although, let's assume for a moment that your sense data is completely 100% unreliable. Assume that for a moment. Is there anything that you can know to be true? Your, your work as a researcher. What is your research based on? The, the, the things that you did, the, the research that you did, you know that that is true. Even if it's not 100% reliable. At this point, we're looking for what is 100% reliable. Because you say, the research that I did, how, do you, how did you gain that research? Your senses. How did those people who get up and went out and did those studies, how did they evaluate things? Use their senses. Is there anything that we can know that is beyond a shadow of a doubt? You're alive. I'm alive? Yeah, what is what is a lie? The fact that you have senses. The fact that you have senses when you're dead. Okay, that's one of the things that that's one of the things that Augustine came up with uh, with the Puranists. Augustine came up against the Puranists, and, and he was doing his best to shut shut them down. He said, "We can at least say that we gain some information through our senses. We know that. What else can we know? How do we interpret the sense from pain or pleasure?" Either well, he's not going to say that we can know how to gain how to, how to how to evaluate those senses because there are some things that are quite pleasurable that aren't good for you. Like smoking to some people. Smoking to some people, overeating to others, uh, consuming vast quantities of alcohol to yet even others. <laughs> I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> To something. I know that I believe, which is um, one thing that actually Descartes picked up on several centuries later during the Renaissance. He wanted to pick up on what, what he actually says, I know that I am thinking, which is you cannot doubt your own existence. No, th this is okay. We could, we could all bring our noisemakers to class. <laughs> If she ever comes at you with a knife, I'll, I'll let you know before she actually gets to you. Don't worry. Um, we cannot doubt our own existence. That's another thing we can know. Anything else that you can say that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt? One thing that was used against the skeptics uh, a while back was a thing and its opposite cannot simultaneously be true. Basic rational principle. You can't, uh, it's a, what they call the theory of non-contradiction. I can say that the stick is straight, or I can say the stick is bent, but it cannot at the same time be straight and bent. It was this, the second idea, that of existence, was something that was picked up by Rene Descartes. Rene Descartes. I will say this, when you read your text, Rao Hutt seriously re misrepresents Descartes. Or right, maybe I'm just too much of a nitpicker. He tries to simplify some of the ideas, and he winds up oversimplifying them to the point that they aren't true. Uh, it makes it, he doesn't say it, but he makes it seem as though skepticism was about ready to take over the world during the Renaissance. Not really, it's been, as a movement, it's been dead and gone for centuries. He makes it seem as though Descartes just might have been a skeptic. He was not. Descartes um, was in a time, in a period of transition. 
We're going to transition from a medieval way of thinking to what we call the modern way of thinking, which is different from modern day. This is a period that we call that we have ancient, medieval, modern, and postmodern or postmodern, uh, postmetaphysical. And in this, and it was the fact that he actually was the father of the modern movement. possibly capitalize that maybe unjustly, but I want to emphasize that when we say modern, we're referring to an era, we're referring to an age, not of, hey, we're all, we're all in Descartes' uh, time now. That's, uh, philosophy has much moved on from that. Descartes was not a skeptic. was not a skeptic, but used skepticism as a tool for developing in his philosophy. Descartes was not a skeptic, though he used skepticism as a tool for developing his philosophy. Descartes was trying to find something that was indubitable, something that could not be doubted. Indubitable means undoubtable. Undoubtable, if you look it up in the dictionary, isn't there. I'm sorry, but I, I wish it was, because indubitable just sounds way too pretentious. But maybe pretentious is what we have to be here in philosophy. Um, he was trying to find something that was beyond doubt. Descartes was trying to find something that was beyond doubt. And he wasn't doing this just for the sake of doing it. What he was trying to do was find a starting point for philosophy. His work was actually called Meditations on First Philosophy. That's because he wanted to, to exclude all the things that could be doubted. Start with one little nugget of truth that is beyond any shadow of doubt, and then let his philosophy blossom from there. He wanted to find something that was beyond a doubt to use. the foundation for his philosophy. If you guys thought that skepticism was crap, at least think of this as, you know, he was going to doubt everything he could and then use that crap to fertilize the nugget of truth so that bloom into his philosophy. Try to find something that's beyond doubt to use as a foundation for his philosophy. Okay, so what's one way to figure out what's beyond doubt? Doubt everything. If you ever want to find out what won't burn, build a bonfire. Start throwing stuff in. What's left at the end of the night? It won't burn. That's the way he did it. 